So greetings. Welcome to Outside the Class. It's our December 6, 2022 episode. We continue on our Matthew series. We're on episode 20, Weeds and Wheat. Part 1, again with Tim Mackey. With this way of doing things, you can watch the video before we begin chatting. We hope to keep these to around 15 minutes or so. Easy to catch. Much easier to catch up on. And don't forget, in the description below are links to all of the audio, video, and source documents that we use here on the Dusty Feed. We want to make sure that any material we use here is properly credited to those folks who work so hard to bring it to us. Without their efforts, learning we do here does not happen. So be sure to click to subscribe, hit that bell icon if you want a reminder. And as always on the Dusty Feet, this is a place we can safely explore the endless ways of God, interconnection of His creation, where belief understandings may be challenged, divine misunderstandings may exist, and traditional teachings might falter as we pursue connection, context, and community with God and each other here in an environment of grace and love. So here we go with some more outside the class on the Dusty Feet. And as always, it is expected that you watch the reference videos first so you get a context for this discussion, right? And to hear the perspective of the originator. Again, in this case, it's Tim Mackey. I link all of the videos for each week on the dustdefeat.com on the outside the class page. So if you have not yet, pause this, click on the links in the description. And then when you come back, then we can chat. <laughs> and we're back. So there is, as usual, so much that we could talk about. So we'll choose a few things. Uh, we're in a parables section of Matthew's accounting, right? This is chapter 13, uh, but there's a lot here. It's interesting to note that we have these stories, these parables, and they're used as a teaching tool for everyone, differently, for the crowd and the disciple alike. But why? Why not just spell it out, right? Uh, wouldn't that have helped cause less confusion? Right? Maybe? So verses 10 through 17 give us maybe a point to be considered, right? So Matthew 13, 10 through 17, right? And the disciples came and asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has, to him, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even that he has, shall be taken away from him. So it's, therefore, I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see, while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You will keep on hearing, but you will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but you will not perceive. For the heart of these people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have closed their eyes, because otherwise, they would see with their eyes, and they would hear with their ears, and they would understand with their heart and return. And I would heal them. But blessed are you 
and your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, but they did not. And to hear what you hear, but they did not hear it. That's Matthew 13, 10 through 17. So now that all sounds neat and tidy, maybe, yeah? You know, maybe? But if that were the case, as it appears that they, the disciples, would get it, and the lingering crowd, uh, as we've been calling them, right, that they would not get it, at least right away. And Jesus knew this. Yet we have in this section of Wheat and Weeds that the disciples are asking for an explanation because they don't understand. So maybe, maybe it's not so clear. And an uncomfortable question? If they're the crowd, their hearts are dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, why not just spell it out? Isn't it just more confusing, right? Um, help them see it clearer. Then we get uh, Matthew 34 and 35 in that chapter, right? Uh, this is inserted by Matthew. Um, these are his, this is his insertion that he adds in Jesus' um, speaking. And Jesus spoke these things to the crowd in parables, and he did not speak to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Hmm. So when he's talking to the crowds, it will always be in a parable. And from what we've seen already, most are not explained. You know, uh, we are so, I'm not sure what the word is. I mean, fortunate maybe um, to see the whole story looking back. Of course, um, we think it's a 2020 vision looking back. Um, but I'll leave, at least we think we see it, right? Maybe, but I'll leave knowing, we'll leave that up for discussion, right? So the lingering crowd, that for sure I'm a part of, because I'm not one of the 12, they are who they are, selected by Jesus. And by the way, they did not ask for the job. The more they knew, the scarier it became for them over time. We are them, and they are us. And I'm in that crowd. And all I hear are these parable stories. And again, most are not explained. And at verse 35 is any indication of what they were supposed to understand. Then I think, again, we might really want to cut them some slack. You know, we're not even exactly sure what some of these mean now. Matthew 13, 35. And this was spoken to fulfill, it was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Remember, we've talked about this many times, that there's a point of reference that's supposed to bring us back or take us to another story. Kind of like a, a footnote in a book, right? So this reference is from Matthew, and it's a backwards view inserted to readers' benefit afterwards to bring us to the prophet. Interesting, because this prophet is a psalm of David. Um, Jesus did not say this to the crowd. Matthew is bringing up the reference afterwards, because Matthew has seen the connection. We, as the benefactor of looking back, will hopefully see the same. So this is from Psalm 78, right? And I'll share verses 1 through 8, right? This is a long psalm. There's 72 verses. There's so much more to this story. And oh, if you want more on this, there's a link in the description to a word of the day from Skip Moen. Uh, to add even more food for thought. You might well read that. 
So Matthew 78, 1 through 8, a mascal of Asaph. Listen, O my people, to my instruction. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not conceal them from their children, but tell to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, his strength, and his wondrous works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should teach them to their children. That the generation that the generation would come to know even the children yet to be born, that they may arise and tell them to their children. That they should put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Mm. That's Psalm 78, just one through eight. So again, before you want to toss them under the bus, be willing to bet that none of us were immediately drawn to Psalms. And then maybe we begin to realize that we might have something in common with that generation. So Tim shared a very personal, and in my opinion, a very good context view story. It's a very real analogy of knowing the whole story. It's the one with his son, Roman, in the splinter. You know, how many times in our lives have we been part of a scenario on either side of the fence on something uh, like that, right? So I have a story from my childhood that I remember. And I remember not so much as a participant in the event, although I was, but from what was shared to me afterwards. Okay, that generation afterwards. So um, so to make a long story short, lot like I can do that, um, my brother Jim, who we've had here on the Dusty Feet, uh, we were very young kids. We were living in an apartment. We were playing around the apartment complex, and we ended up in the laundry room. Me, I ended up convincing my brother that the dryer was a rocket ship, and we could fly into space. So Jimmy climbs in the dryer, and I close the door. Unbeknownst to us, the coin dryer still had time on it. It started up, and my brother started tumbling. I could not get the dry door open. I freaked out. Let's pause here. I want to share something to add to this moment. As a child growing up, I was a chronic stutterer. I loved to talk, but I stuttered a lot. So I run upstairs to my folks, and I try to tell them about Jimmy. Not only stuttering horribly, uh, go figure, the pressure to talk. And I'm probably not really making much sense since the aforementioned scenario is not really a normal thing. Suffice to say, since you've met Jim, that he survived. Trip to the emergency room later showed no broken bones, just lots of contusions and bruising. So like Tim's story with people hearing the screams from Roman and not knowing the story, the conclusions one would probably come to would not be very good. And with my story, it's very visual. Imagine my mom going to the grocery store with her two boys, her youngest sitting in the seat at the front of the cart, and he's all battered and bruised. Folks looking, pointing, whispering. Imagine their thoughts, the possible and the probable, and yet entirely 
unjustified. Yet the shame and embarrassments of my mom must have felt unimaginable. The entire envision scenario is completely incorrect. Just the unfortunate result of two kids playing. I very much empathize with Tim, and I understand the plight. As you all know, I'm, I guess one could say, hypersensitive to context. The whole story is the story. The rest, all the little stories, they're just scenes. And scenes, jumbled, taken out of context, or even put in an unintended order, can cause, no, they will cause much confusion. Much confusion. So on that note, we'll close this episode. But with that discussed, we can get onto the topics of hell and heaven and the possible ways to tie to weeds and wheat. But maybe, maybe, not as you think. So, point to ponder. This will probably be our mantra for a while because we still need to remember this. Make no judgments where you have no compassion. Anne McCaffrey. With that, thank you again for being with us today on Outside the Class on the Dusty Feet. <laughs>